All right, welcome back. If you're just joining us, it's Daybreak on Trust Television, and it's that segment where we take a deep dive into uh, conversations for this morning. The long wait for Nigeria's oil refinery uh, to come back on stream continues as hope for Ni as Nigerians uh, see for refineries being as hope for Nigeria, uh, you know, improve over the likelihood that four of its major local refineries would at some point in the course of the year come back into full operations. Uh, the Patakot refinery, for instance, is here to commence operation despite assurances by authorities uh, to come on stream in about two weeks. That assurance was given um, on the 16th of March last year by the GCO of the NNPCL, uh, Mr. Melikiari, while addressing members of the Nigerian Senate. About how long will Nigeria continue this way? This morning, our focus on daybreak would be on the failures of taking Nigeria's petroleum refinery uh, to that enviable height where we can then begin to see impact, you know, on uh, petroleum prices in Nigeria and by extension to every other sector because we know that our current inflation crisis is a pass-through from the energy crisis uh, that we have in Nigeria, which, which whether you're talking about the cost of diesel or, you know, the cost of fuel or the cost of Jet A1 that are seeing prices of uh, aviation tickets shoot over the rocket. We have in the studio an expert in the sector, Dr. Joseph Obele. I, I suppose I pronounced that correctly. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. Joseph Obele mm -hmm. is an author, if the former chairman of the Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria River State Branch and a lecturer with Ignatius at Juru University of Education, Portacot. Dr. Bele, it's a pleasure to have you join us. Good Thank morning. You, for having me. Good you morning. seem to be a man of uh, many parts, uh, <laughs> right. but all of them revolving around the oil yeah. industry. Thank yeah. you. I appreciate this. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Um, you know, we the Patakot refinery, you know, commenced um, rehabilitation in, in 2019. It's been five years down the line. We have had so many deadlines uh, that have lapsed. Some of them that lead to international logistical challenge occasioned by the COVID-19 and the shutting down of uh, international airspace and, and maritime operation and all. Uh, you know, but we are beginning to get glimpses of hope. The government uh, said they completed mechanical, uh, there were mechanical completion in December, and then we have certifications and standardizations happening. Tell us, for somebody who has played so much in this sector and from operating from an area that shares the same space as the Portacourt refinery, how significant a, is the coming on stream of that refinery to changing the dynamics, uh, the, the energy dynamics in Nigeria? Okay, let's start by asking ourselves a question. I think that could be a background question, a cardinal question for this conversation. What went wrong with the refinery? Mm -hmm. What went wrong with the refinery? Mm -hmm. Was it a mechanical error? Was it a managerial error? Mm -hmm. Was it a technical error? Mm -hmm. Or was it like the plant was out of time? And I'll really say you can't find any answer to the whole of this question. So the best approach to it is for us to remind ourselves about the statement by the GMD of NNPC when the refinery was shut down. And in the press interview, journalists like your team mm. ask him and he used the word. Google it after now, mm. the word I want to put to you. It makes no business sense. Once you just type that word, it mm. makes no business sense. Mm. His name will just mm. pop up. He says, it makes no business sense operating the refineries. So this connotes the fact that the Patako refinery, the Wari refinery, the Kaduna refinery, never had any mechanical error mm. shutting it down. But arising from the COVID-19 and other international variables or external variables, there was an uprise to the price of crude oil. So the appropriation of uh, crude oil for exportation and local refining has a percentage of 60-40. 60-40 mm. to say, no matter the drilling activities done by these multinationals, mm. you reserve 40% for local refining, mm. where you trade in the international market 60%. 60%. Mm. That is the, the template and that is the standard. Mm. So the 40% for local refining should be distributed as a quota between the war refinery, cardinal refinery, and the Potaco refinery. The Potaco first and two in the lesser element. So, on this background, after referring this 40 
designed for local refining. How will you sell it? You sell it in the local market, yeah. which is in Naira. Yeah. So this 40 percent selling it in the international market gives them more money when there was an upward review to the price of crude oil. So now, if you are the MD of uh, a refinery plant, and you'll be given a quota allocation mm. of 40 percent, mm. and refining you sell it in Naira, mm. you'll make like two billion. But selling the raw commodity, mm. you'll make like 10 billion. I want to ask mm. you, which one will you mm. go for? Mm. Yeah, but the question Nigerians mm. would ask mm. in return is the objective for setting up these refineries. No, the refinery to meet local it wasn't demand set on profiteering. Mm. Yeah. It, was, it, it was set on the ground of social welfare package. Mm. Like, our oh, people should have this commodity handy. Mm. But now, the MD, when he uses this word, it makes no business sense. The Nigerians did not do a, conduct a research to go into the depth of that word, mm. to really know the meaning of that word. So, what I'm trying to put to the analysis, why he used mm. that word, mm. it makes no business sense. You are quarter of 40%. Selling it raw directly, mm. you make more than refining where you sell in dollars. Obviously, we can join him in saying it makes no business sense. Mm. As a trader, mm. where you can sell your commodity higher, mm. you can't be fooled to sell it in a lesser mm. market. Mm. So, on this background, we can categorically state here mm. that the refinery wasn't shut down mm. because of mechanical error, technical error, or managerial error. Mm. It's just that he said it was a business decision. Yes, right. it, it was a business strategic decision. Yeah. Where, in, in hindsight, in yeah. hindsight, doctor, yeah. was that a wrong? Was that the wrong move? No, for on the ground of social welfare mm. package, mm. Your, your, your colleague mm. asked a question mm. here. What was the objective mm. of our forefathers mm. of setting up this plan? It was built by us by a military regime, mm. and uh, I'm asking, what can we really boast of? To the civilian regime we've enjoyed since yeah. uh, or Basinger after Basinger, mm -hmm. Jonathan mm -hmm. after Jonathan, the late no the late Yaradura and the rest mm -hmm. of them. Who can even boast of a modular refinery mm -hmm. that uh, any multi billionaire can just set up mm -hmm. within a few weeks? Mm -hmm. No one. But this were built for us by uh, the military. So they have good intention and good objectives for us. So he shut it down. Mm -hmm. And what happened? Now buying the refined product with the profit you make on exporting the raw crude oil. What's cheap for them? Until the Ukraine-Russia the Ukraine, uh, Russia tension war, yeah. affected the high sea, which was the passageway for all these uh, vessels and the rest. Mm. And the price of refined product now tripled. On that note, it was an issue for them. Now, the total staff strength of NMPC as at when the four refineries were shut down was at close about nine to eight thousand persons. Mm. And a, a manager of NLPC told me that they can keep this staff strength without any of these refineries for the next 50 years. Mm. And I asked him why. He said they are making more selling the raw quota mm. that was des designed or allotted for local refining mm. than uh, uh, said they are making more profit mm. with, uh, yeah. on exporting. So lo local refining was not as far as the business is concerned. Yeah, they were making more, yeah. more, yeah. because now after refining, for uh, put into consideration cost of production and all those uh, analytical costs yeah. and the rest, associated costs, yeah. they will not sell it in Naira, yeah. or with, uh, to say this is a local market, but selling that raw crude, you will make it more. Yeah. So it was on that ground they shut down these refineries. It's good to establish this background. Yeah. That's why I say, what yeah. went wrong with the refinery? Yeah. It wasn't shut down on mechanical or technical yeah. ground. So now going forward, let's first establish that Nigeria is the only OPEC member nation mm. that has shut down his or her own refinery, hence comfortable importing or buying from the international market. Is the only. Mm. Some OPEC member nations actually buy, but they buy to complement what they have. They're not buying holistically. Mm. To say 100% of our requirement, we are buying from the... No, no. The Nigeria is the only. Mm. And I describe this as a shameful. Mm. It's shameful. We as Nigerians, we should be ashamed of ourselves. That, okay, like your wife, mm. shutting down her kitchen, mm. and she's buying from a fast food mm. closer to your house, and to a point where there is crisis in that fast food, mm. saying there is a rise in price of rice, and your wife now falls back. What can we do to her kitchen? Mm. I've been issued what went wrong with her kitchen. Mm. She was comfortable buying from that fast food. Mm. That's just a scenario. Mm. So you, you, on that case, you can say, my wife was stupid, mm. shutting down her kitchen, mm. relying on the fast food somewhere. Mm. The, and, 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 and the most funny aspect of this, Nigeria's biggest buying market, which is the Amsterdam, Netherlands, mm. they are buying from a nation-owned refinery. 
And I will put to you that the oldest refinery in the world is today about 171 uh, years old mm -hmm. and still functional at this hour. Mm -hmm. The first refinery in Nigeria, capacity of 50,000 barrels built in Alice mm -hmm. Element in Port Harcourt, mm -hmm. It, was, it, it should be like 52 years old today. Mm -hmm. And now the one, second one in the Alessa element should be like 30 something years old. The war refinery about 20 something years old. Cardinal refinery that has been shut down for 22 years today. Mm -hmm. This it makes it 22 mm -hmm. years. Cardinal refinery has been shut down. It is less than 25 years old. Mm -hmm. But I'm putting to you that the oldest refinery on planet Earth mm -hmm. is about 172 years old today. Mm -hmm. Still functional as we speak. Mm -hmm. So it was the age or, or, or the, let me say, the, the, the time they constructed the refinery. It's not an issue. So, so, so the conversation about our refineries being obsolete doesn't hold water in your I'm view. telling you that the oldest refinery on planet Earth yeah. is 172 years old. And still functional. Yeah, it's still functional yeah. today as we speak. Go go it later, you'll see it. Yeah. So now, what we are looking at now is that what went wrong with the refinery has been established. That it was a strategic business decision in view of making more just for themselves mm. and not minding the, the objective, on, yes, yeah, which is social the welfare market. package mm. to, to like ease the pains, the hardship mm. that we are experiencing right now. So going further, the turnaround maintenance should have been done every five years. So who is the person in charge that left it undone for 21 years? that affected the plan. Mm. So government of Nigeria, when the, our brother Timmy Presiva mm. was a minister, mm. he approached the Africa Bank mm. and he, he got a loan of $1.5 billion. Mm. And the loan was a counterpart funding. Mm. There is a percentage that should come from the federal government. And there is a percentage that should come from the Africa Bank. Mm. But now we are aware that uh, during the time of President uh, Buhari, is the counterpart funding that should come from the federal government mm. was delayed. Mm. So uh, kudos to President Tinibu. Mm. Few weeks in office signed at that part of the federal government. Mm. Hence, we see speed. I, I think that is serious commitment right now. Mm. I, I was describing the project before as a snail speed, mm. but now I can describe the project right now as a jet speed. Mm. The speed is encouraging, and uh, the, I, when, I will advise them. When you say the speed is encouraging, the language the average Nigerian would understand is, when until we begin to see trucks come out of uh, by, by, by prosy, I will say, I'm a member of, I'm from Alessi Leme, where we have the, uh, this yes. thing. And I'm a businessman, I have a facility there, and I go there every day. Yeah. I visit the, the site every day. Yeah. So I describe, I have a press interview where I describe the speed as a snail speed. Yeah. Um, the who uses speed as a snail speed is not describing the speed as a jet speed, yeah. meaning I see what is happening every day. So I'm saying, Kudos to the recent president because his highs is there and the Minister of State for Petroleum for oil is doing a great job. He's always there per week, per week, per term. So I, I, I'm categorically saying the speed is encouraging. But I want to advise him to be slow in giving a tentative commencement period. Right. They've done that several times. Yeah, they told so many us, deadlines. Yes, they, they told us second quarter of last year they failed. Mm. They said last quarter of last year they failed. They said first quarter of this year they failed. Recently, the GMD of NNPC say in two weeks' time. Mm. And I want to yeah, say, no, this two weeks' time is not really realistic. Mm. That it may not really be visible. Why as do that. you say that? Yes. I mean, you say it's just speed, so it yes. makes sense to give a timeline to it. My friends are contractors. They are handling mm. critical projects mm. and uh, bringing up the, the facility. It has a process. There's a water steaming process. There's a plant steaming process. Mm. And we've not seen the whole of these things. Mm. And uh, uh, I, I think they owe Nigeria's apology on the flare they did the, the mm. eve of 24th December last year. Mm. And Nigerians just like, what was the rationale behind that? Mm. Well, I'm, I'm yet to know the rationale. Now, are you I, saying that... I, I'll call that, it Ojoro, or I'll call it yeah, tricks to Nigerians. Yeah. Or what. Mr. President, in one of his interviews, as at August, said the plant will be up by December this year. Mm. So on the 24th of uh, December last year, mm. nothing was set for the plant to come up. Mm. So they now use a gas cylinder, normal gas cylinder you have in your house, put in the flare and light up. Well, what they did there is the highest mm. crime to Nigeria as a nation. I thought these were, those were test, test yeah. run uh, you Test know, run it was. Yeah. It, it, it was on just for five, ten minutes. And it, mm. it, it, it came. Mm. So, no, there's nothing wrong coming up to apologize. Mm. I said December, mm. and December is not visible. Let us, please, let please us get us some things, things very yes. clear. Um, uh, because that, that you know, the point the time, no, I didn't yes. saw. I was also at LMA. Okay, you know. So, and I'm trying to and understand how long. No, I, I, that, my business was not to count how long it lasted. Mm. I was there. I witnessed the flare, and then we went back to briefing. Okay. So, but the Good. point I wanted to make was so that we do not. Uh, 
we get proper understandings on how to interrogate these things when they happen. Mm -hmm. I use, because they described it as mechanical completion. Mechanical <laughs> completion does not, as I understood it, translate into product production. Mm -hmm. It is that components that are supposed to be, that are supposed to aid the functionality of um, the finalists have been coupled mm -hmm. and are completed. And so after certifications, they're supposed to start. Are you saying that that mechanical completion was false? No. As at that point, the job was about, I, I think I would say 80% stage of completion. Mm -hmm. So there was no indication of readiness for commencement. Mm -hmm. But keeping the, uh, the word of Mr. President as a bond, mm -hmm. he told Nigerians by December, mm -hmm. and we'll have six days to run out December. Mm -hmm. So this was 23rd December, 24th. Mm -hmm. ah, this, mm -hmm. we, we are running out of December. So what do we do? Mm. They, they got a small gas burner, the mm. local gas burner, mm. Mm. put it in the flare mm. and just pack it up and people saw like mm. TVs captured mm. it and the rest and they left. Mm. Just one, it was almost all of the one hour, mm. it was done again. There was no steaming of the plant. Mm. What should bring on that flare was to kickstart the plant. Mm. The plant never, there was no plant on that very day. Mm. Just the flare alone. Mm. Because there is indication to pass out by his life. When you see the flare, the plant is on. Operation. The plant wasn't mm. on mm. that very day. Mm. That very well. well. So I think we Nigerians mm. should request for apology mm. for doing that to us. But, but, but also, I mean, you pointed out that you've seen a commendable um, improvement in, in what they're trying obviously, to do right obviously. now. If you, do, if you can't put a timeline on it, in your estimation, how much longer do Nigerians have to wait before these refineries? Plus or minus, I, I think yeah. I, I would say the Potaco refinery mm. will be coming up before June this year. Mm. It will be coming up. Regardless of what the government said, no, if, if they give us a sooner date, now Potaco Refinery, yeah. take note, is the old refinery mm. of 50,000 production barrels mm. per day, mm. not the bigger refinery. Mm. So, and, and now the Nigerian consumption is close, is put to about 50 million liters per day, our consumption of PMS. Mm. But that plant will be giving us about uh, seven, 7 million or so. So that uh, plant will not even terminate or abort mm. our total dependence on importation from the international market mm. Mm. until when we see the world refinery up, the cardinal refinery up, and I, I think they are committed. But the one question we should ask right now is that after the rehabilitation mm. by taking mm. the consultant doing the rehabilitation, who we'll manage this facility? Yeah, we will come to that, mm. um, uh, which is the question of... Um, uh, whether we'll continue with the old management, but we have also seen the NNPC advertise in January yes. for a manager uh, to come on board, yes. something like uh, outsourcing yeah. the operation of the plant completely. Now, one of the uh, uh, things that are agitating the minds of Nigerians, you, you talked about the 50,000, which they told us has been upgraded to 60. Uh, but how does this feed into the bigger refinery, the 130,000, which brings everything to about... Uh, 130 or 40, which brings no, every time about The bigger refinery is 200,000 barrels, mm -hmm. and this very one is 50 or greater than I know 60. everything. Everything is 250 over there. It's 250. Yes. My, my point is, how does what we have done feed into the bigger one? Because overall, they told us everything will be completed by the end of 2024. No, it's a disjointed plant. Mm -hmm. This it? one doesn't relate to this one. Okay. This is a separate plant on its own. But and in terms and the of other one is a separate plant, plant on its own. So yeah. this one can work dependently, not relying on the other mm -hmm. one. Oh, okay. So, uh, what what then is happening to the other one? Because as far as Nigerians are concerned, we see but I, I can going put to you that the second Nigeria refinery will be off by early next year. There's commitment to both plant over there, but the, uh, the old refinery, I would say, they are 95 percent completion stage of it, 98 mm -hmm. or 98 or so. And we also saw statements from Shell. To the effect that they had also supply, they have stockpiled crew. Yes, they have done that. They have mm. done that. Mm. The supply crew is not an issue. Completely the refinery is not an issue. But who manages the refinery after the job? That is the critical question we should be asking right now. And we are aware that early this year, January this year, NMPC put up an advert calling for private partners to, to bid for it. And we privileged information we have in the case that some Nigerian local oil firms bidded, Asia firms bidded. American things bidded. And we as stakeholders of the oil and gas sector, we are posited, we, we, we have mentioned that, uh, like a way of advice, that NMPC shouldn't manage this plant after rehabilitation one. Mm. The plant shouldn't be handed over to a Nigerian-owned mm. private firm, one. Then two, Wh why? 
it shouldn't be given. The Nigeria factor mm -hmm. coming into play, I, I, I can win the bidding, mm -hmm. but I may not be the one uh, operating it. Mm -hmm. A politician can win the bidding, mm -hmm. but let it be a reputable company with right. pedigree. Right. We yeah. know of this company has been in oil and you, gas you business. Don't, you don't think there's any uh, local? I mean, we have seen uh, Nigeria. I said a lot of them bid it. Yeah. A lot of them bid it. Mm -hmm. So we are advising that this facility shouldn't be handed over to an Asia firm, mm -hmm. shouldn't be handed over to a Nigeria local firm. Mm -hmm. but, and, uh, let me say an England firm mm -hmm. or American firm mm -hmm. with a reputation. Mm -hmm. a I mean, we are company. talking about, we have come full cycle in this country and we have seen how investments that are supposed to help Nigerians create wealth mm -hmm. are given to foreigners. And when the foreigners begin to prioritize uh, taking out profit, yeah. as we have seen with some telecom companies yeah. in Nigeria, we start shouting right. that they are moving the wealth to Nigeria. Is, yeah. So why would Nigerians like you, mm. who have built Advocate, competence in this yeah. industry over the years, wake up and recommend that the company be handed over to a firm? So it, it, it should our focus be the profit the firm is making or efficiency and effectiveness? That's the point. Are we yeah. saying mm. that, that no we can't Nigerian find Nigerians who have built competency yeah. and, and, and I mean, we have the Dangote refinery I mean, we're all is, trying to be proud of right own, uh, The, the Dangote refinery, mm. do you know the, the, mm. the management staff, mm. the component of the management but staff? But it's owned by Nigeria. No, it's owned by Nigeria. The component of the Nigerian staff. Yeah, that's the point, Dr. Ebele. Are you saying we can't find Nigerians that can recruit Competency from across the world, do you know, but retains do you know, the component. Do you know my fear with the Nigerian mm. factor? Yes, I'm not saying Nigerians are not. Comp my fear with Nigerian factor is that if you open it up, the Nigerian company can bid for this. Mm. A politician can sign it in and engage one, two. two. No, mm. it, it, it can be the hands of Joe. How did they used yeah, to say yeah, that parable? Yeah, the, 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 the voice of, of Joe Esau, and the hands of Esau. Esau, yeah. Yeah. It, it yeah, could be that yeah. scenario. Mm. Before you know this. And that could undermine. It, 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 there's another saying, say, monkey and don't mm. enter super, want it, want it, want it. The Nigerian factor mm. is like a mystery. Mm. So let's just give it out to a reputable. We are sure this you know, thing you know has I'm been in this business for the past 20 yeah, years. Doctor, we have heard of your name since we are in mm. primary school. You know, Take Dr. this thing. Dr. Billy, why I'm saying this is. That why I am having issues with your recommendation is is the Nigerian in me, you know, wanting to, you know, distort that that head age long perception that if it has to be done perfectly, then it mm. has to be done by a foreigner. Mm. And I'll say this at the rate at, at the at the expense of appearing like one is trying to promote other brand, we have seen a Nigerian come into the aviation space and disrupt him and disrupt mm. what's going on there. Mm. We know how much. We, we came, I mean, uh, uh, prices were distorted in Nigeria. Is there any political no. element regarding That's the this point. result? You That's the point. At? What I am saying is, what stops us from making sure that the transaction dynamics mm. makes sure that only the right kind of Nigerians get this, this rather than politicians? No, it's here. It's obvious that any sources you can see from a Nigerian man being in business, I think is far from political elements. Mm. It's far from it. So now, this, you, you cannot separate politics mm. from the privatization of the political mm. refinery. But now, a Nigerian man coming up with an investment, so you can see that there won't be any indication or components of politics. So are he's you an say, investor. Are you saying so now, this is a government parasite. Releasing that, it out, yeah. there was a political factor. Okay, that, Dr. Abele, are you saying a Nigerian will come in putting money in a venture like Potako Refinery and watch it mismanaged? No, I'm saying the, the point of awarding, signing mm. out who takes over this refinery, that's where you see the political uh, a politician mm. or who, who, the officer in charge of awarding can say, you, you mm. must give me 2% in all you do mm. there. Mm. That will affect the selling mm. rate of your product. Mm. So that must and be political yeah. factor and political yeah. influence. But now, mm. let's say you're giving that to Mobi. Mm. Let's say you're giving that to Share. Let's say you're giving that to Indorama. Let's say you're giving that to bigger names mm. that have 50 years pedigree and good uh, reputation yeah. and, and the rest. Mm -hmm. now, we'll just go, uh, go and sleep. Yeah. My, my concern is to see that refinery functional in the next 20 yeah. years. Yeah. Do you know the amount of money they are spent fixing it? That money can build for us four or five modular refineries, yeah. $1.5 billion. Yeah. So now, this, the, the workability is my concern, not who takes over. Mm -hmm. So regarding who takes over, it shouldn't be given, I'm standing on that, yeah. it shouldn't be privatized yeah. in Nigeria own firm. I mean, uh, I don't completely disagree with your notion, but you know, the Nigerian in us wants us to, you know, take responsibility for our own growth and development. But your point stands to reason that we've seen so many, 
businesses go under in the hands of Nigerians, mainly because their inability to optimally run some of these businesses and make uh, business uh, you know, sense out of it for the longevity that it requires is uh, also something that we have to consider. But Dr. Ogbele, thank you so much for the insight. I would love to uh, you know, continue, but unfortunately we're out of time uh, for this one. So thank you most kindly uh, for, for, for your analysis <laughs> this morning. Right, right.